everybody. Welcome. This is the Bold and the Beautiful. We are here right now. We are getting ready to start our broadcast, and I'm Curtis Austin, and we are now on the When Christian Speak Talk Radio. We air every second Saturday of the month at 10 a.m. Won't you just tune in and welcome to When Christian Talk Radio, Bold and the Beautiful. If it wasn't for God, I'd be weak. I wouldn't wake up from my sleep. I wouldn't have nothing to eat. I wouldn't be so unique. If it wasn't for God, I would lose it. I wouldn't live under a roof and yeah. I wouldn't be up in this booth and yeah. I wouldn't know he is the truth and if it wasn't for God I would have been bold the enemy would have taken my soul but now I rise up and I surprise up like the day that he rose if it wasn't for God I wouldn't be up in these four cars on the way to my show if it wasn't for God I wouldn't have not I would have been cool if it wasn't for God I wouldn't have clothes no shoes to cover my toes no hat to cover my head if it wasn't for God I would have if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be counted out. Ay. My family down and out. Ay. I'm blessed up without a doubt. Ay. Gotta make sure I shout it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bold and Beautiful is a talk show designed to bring the Word of God to youth and young adults around the world and embolden them to live out loud for Jesus. Our vision is to see young people of the world rising up to take their rightful place as leaders and world changers. I'm a young girl spitting that gospel. Last time I saw the God, he said, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Halle, hallelujah. And they try to act like they never knew you. But the devil can't do nothing to you. The power, I give it them. The glory, I give it them. Amen, amen, and good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. This is one of our hosts, Minister Jordana, and of course, I'm always joined by my host, uh, Reverend Novena and Reverend Curtis. Y'all give a shout out. What's up? What's up? Good morning. And of course, we are joined today by two lovely, awesome young ladies, Riley and Summer Mensa. Say hey. Hey. Hi. <laughs> so we are excited this morning. These two young adults are just awesome. And so we are excited today to hear what they have to say about life and everything else. So how they're living and how they are growing and learning about the Lord and about themselves as we walk in this season and in this world. Um, as um, I said in the description, um, if you all saw the blast, um, they are both college bound. Um, Riley is actually a matriculating senior going to a university this fall, and her older sister, Summer, is going into her third year um, in college. So we are excited to hear what they both have to say today. Um, Reverend Ovina, could you actually just open us up in prayer really quickly? Certainly, certainly. Um, Father God, we just love you and we praise you and we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to. Um, broadcast, Lord. Uh, we thank you for the young ladies who um, decided to join us this morning, and, and I thank you for giving us this platform, Lord God, to share how you're moving in our young people's lives, Lord God. We just thank you for this program. We thank you for all that's being done and said, Lord God, in this program, and we just give you all the glory, the honor, and the power. Um, have your way, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, and glory be to Jesus. All right, Reverend Arena, did you want to start off and say anything? I know you wanted to share something. Yes, yes, yes. I have known the Mensa girls for um, quite a while, and um, I met them um, a few years ago, and they were such beautiful young ladies uh, then, and so polite and so kind, and and, um, it's beautiful just to watch them grow into um, lovely young ladies. I know um, many of you may have seen the picture that was um, presented along with the advertising for the broadcast, and those, those pictures, that picture is, it just um, shows how they've um, grown into these lovely ladies. And um, so I just wanted to just reflect a little bit with um, when we first met. I remember when we started 
at the, at the same church, and they were so polite in how they led us to our classes and just um, just beautiful. And um, ultimately, I became uh, one of the teachers in youth ministry, and um, we used to get so excited in youth ministry and Riley. <laughs> Riley, you know, she was like, okay, I see you guys are excited about the Lord and everything, and we want to be too. Um, and I was like, okay, just come on. But it was like, no, we we understand better because we did let another um, youth present. And when that youth presented, I think he just opened the eyes, took the, the blinders off of a lot of other youth's um, eyes, and he was able to get through. So um, I appreciated Riley's bravery when she just, just stepped up and talked to um, the leaders and said, you know, it's good that you guys are excited about Jesus, but I got a little bit more fire and more hungry for Jesus when I saw a person that was young like me um, just express their love for God. So, Riley, did you want to uh, just share a little bit about that moment or, or how the fire ignited in you for Jesus after that time? Yeah, yeah. So um, for a while I was, you know, well, I've always been like, fearful, you know, in church in a way, and I was always wondering, like, how to get to the level people were, um, like, watching and praise and worship and watching them scream for Jesus, and I was like, how do I get to that? And, you know, the child mind, you're like, how do I get to that before I die so I won't go to hell? And I was always just (laughs) so scared, for like, basically for no reason, at, like, seven years old, and, um... But my relationship started expanding with Jesus, so, like, through hard times of school and stuff like that. And um, I've been wanting to actually, because, like, I've always loved discussions, and I've always loved talking and stuff like that, to hear other people's ideas, but also, like, sharing mine. And um, I, when I saw Brandon do it in teens class one day, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do. Like, it looked so cool when he did it with ease, and it was... It wasn't long, it wasn't anything big, but everybody sat and listened, and I thought it was nice, and I was like, let me try that. So (laughs) it was kind of the inspiration for the start, (laughs) I guess. Uh And and, and what about you, Summer? I know when you had come back from, like, your first year away in college, I I saw a different person. You know, I saw you growing while you were here, but then when you came back, you brought some new stuff with you. So um, you want to share how um, the fire was ignited in your heart for Jesus? Yeah, sure. Um, So we grew up in the church, the same church our whole life. We've been in the same place for about 19 years. And um, I could feel, like, just my relationship with God growing. And I think it really just, like, lit up when I started college because at the time, I was like, God, I don't know your voice, and I know all these things I'm supposed to do, but, like, and they're talking about this relationship with you, but I was being real. I'm like, I don't know what you sound like, and I don't mm. even know how to hear from you. So I think I think the first semester of my freshman year, that's kind of when, just in my quiet times, he kind of just took me up and was, in his own unique way, just teaching me. And I think... I like I, every single when I think about it every single semester my relationship with him would just get stronger um and I just begin to understand his voice and now I'm at a point where I can say I know when God is talking to me and he was just teaching me things about church and like just losing the typical traditions and I guess we can go into that more um, later on but I think when I left college and I was literally on my own thousands of miles away without many people, he was really there. And I think that's the fire you see because he, he really came and got me at that time. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I definitely got uh, Reverend Curtis, you got a question? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I was just, I, I'm just over here smiling because, you know, I'm listening to um, each of their encounters and how. Um, each particular person had that, it, you know, that 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 rare, that moment that we all have where you realize, like what we talked about the last month, about that moment that you know that this is it. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow, I mm-hmm. got this. You know, and um, you know, it's so awesome because, you know, a lot of people 
like someone was saying, you know, they, they've been serving God for a long time and watching all the things, but yet they don't know God's voice. And, and, and yet when she was placed in a position where she really was honest with God, you know, and the same way with Riley, you know, and that's what we have to do with our relationships with God. We really have to be honest in our relationships with God because then God starts to open up doors. So, I mean, I'm just over here smiling, just listening to how that connection came and then how that fire ignited and then where we are today. So one of the things that um, I had uh you know, was just thinking about with both of you. So now that you both have, you know, that intimate relationship with God and Riley, you was like, when Brandon shared his testimony, you was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. That's so cool. Right. And then some of, you know, like, you know, you grew into this, 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 this relationship with the Lord, because you realized that once you were alone, God never left you alone. So realizing this, how do you convey that to the youth and where they might be right now? Um, I guess I would say that it's all a journey. Like, we we both are at different spots, and I know every Christian is, is in, at a different spot. Um, and I think to the youth out there, it's just you just have to let God know your heart, really. Um, he's there, and he will always be there. Um, I, I've just been learning that there's really no pressure with God. Mm-hmm. I think people... We've, We've grown grown up kind of feeling the pressure. It was almost it wasn't extreme, but we kind of felt that. And I just subliminal pressure. (laughs) Yeah. And so, just growing up, we always felt okay. Well, I have to do this, and I have to read my Bible ten times a week and do this. But I think it's important for people to know that it's it's really just a one on one conversation, and you just kind of just have to let him come to you really. Hmm. Yeah, and um, I always say that, um, like, like yes, to the world, Christianity is a religion, but Christianity should be a lifestyle more so, hmm. and um, stop thinking of it in more so like a physical way, like rituals, like like religions specify a religion should have, like do this, do this, do this, mm-hmm. and start um, more so like tapping into your spiritual self and like. Um, but also, I agree with the pressure thing. Like, just um, like your time really is your time. Like, it, it's gradual. It's it's not always just like boom. Like, yeah, yeah, I believe. Like, no, it's it's gradual. <laughs> it's a process. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I hear you. That's awesome. It's a process, and I love that. I love how you guys are expressing the fact that, um, however you come to Jesus, whatever it looks like. Um, however much time you do or don't spend that it's really about just creating that relationship and that bond and that intimacy and that it is not about do's and don'ts and I have to you know perform this and do that you know the scripture talks about work and and what that means and how you guys are just really expressing that you have to just walk the path and then see how it unfolds because you know people's walk looks very different so you know whereas some people I remember I used to always be um jealous when um, someone would say, oh my gosh, I've been, you know, before the Lord three, four hours and he showed up and I passed out and I woke back up and Jesus was still there and, you know, angels came down on her. I'd be like, I want that Jesus. But, you know, you just have to, you know, not look for how people show up or how God shows up in other people's relationship, but just walk out your own relationship. And, you know, I even remember, like, you know, someone said, you know, I lay down on the floor for three hours, my face down in the Bible. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try that. And, like, nothing happened. Like, so, yeah. so don't do yeah. that. Like, like just because How somebody works? else said it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so just, just you know, let, let us figure out how we're going to relate. It's not going to be like anybody else, and you don't have to, you know, read, you know, three chapters of the Bible or read the Bible through and through eight times a year or anything crazy like that. So mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Um, Summer, I want to um, piggyback on um, something you first started talking about, about um, being in the same church environment for so long and then even go into, you know, how it changed and, you know, what transpired. Of course, you don't have to go into great detail, but, you know, um, what it's like even if you struggle through the church environment not being what you think it is and how you have to, like, deal with that mentally and how you go to God with that. Right. Um, I think that's the key is going to God. Um, so I 
being in college, I would visit different churches, and as I said, I was in one church for pretty much my whole life. So I was used to seeing how different churches did their things, and some were more laid back, some were more more uptight, um, and I wouldn't I would never saw it as a bad thing, but I was like, okay, this is different, um, and some. I'd go in looking for certain things and not necessarily feeling comfortable, and I realized really it's all about the Spirit, and I just kept going back to God, His Spirit, asking Him, God, what do you want me to do, or where do you want me to be, and I think that's a key as as people are going to church, whether it's you're a physical church or you're just tuning in on online or something, it's really about your connection with God, and I think that's what helps, that's really the main the main focus, it's really about Him, so as you're going through um, your, your daily services, um, I feel it's good to just always check back with Him, because He's been just a guiding force in it all, like calming me down, like summer is okay, don't worry, or just when I try to when when I tend to freak out about things, um, I felt just going back to him and letting him calm me down was oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know what you mean. <laughs> I definitely know what you mean on that. <laughs> hey, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, because there's been plenty of times where, um, you know, that I, you know, this stuff be on my mind and on my mind and my mind be running and racing everywhere and then God say, I got you. Just trust me. I got you. And that's yeah. the part of our relationship. Like you said, it's just not, it's not no routine thing. It's like, it's a real friendship, you know, the, and you know, it's truly the scripture in Psalms 25, I think it's verse 14, where it says the secret of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. And the word um, secret um, in the Hebrew is actually translated friendship. And, you know, God wants us to know that his friendship is with us. You know what I'm saying? That no matter where we at or what we're going through, he is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. So, like, I I love how you were talking about that relationship and not that routine aspect of it. And, um, you know, it's important that that we realize that because – this thing is not rocket science. It's, it, it, and then, and then how every and I actually saw that from your testimonies as well as about how God interacts with us differently at times, and we shouldn't look at it like like like, like Minister Joy was saying. Oh, I was in. Uh, somebody was saying I was in the in the presence of God and my face down for three hours and prayed for for six and and all that, you know. And then you be forcing yourself to do something, and God never even said that you had to do that. God to say, won't you just come sit with me for a little while, talk? Won't you take a walk with me, you know? Just take a walk with me, you know, and sometimes taking a walk with God, you get more revelation from just taking a walk with God mm-hmm. than you be sitting right there on your floor prostrated, you know, because God right. wants us to know the intimacy that it is, yeah. and I just I just love what you, what, what, you know, how both of you found that intimacy where it's not routine or religion, but it's relationship and it's connection, and that's what people are drawn to, so, you know, I'm the, I'm just sitting over here, y- y'all should see, y- you really should see my, my, my face right now, <laughs> I, my, my smile, you know, I look like I look like that the, the good humor smile thing was like everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but bless the Lord, bless the Lord. And Riley, if you wanted to, I guess piggyback up on like the same question about what it's like right now. I guess not to be connected necessarily to a church that you're going to um, every Sunday or every week, and what that kind of look like, what that looks like for you, and then like how are you like working through that process? Yeah, um, so definitely like I was saying before, um, it's it's hard to remember God sometimes because you used to get a reminder every single Sunday, yeah, God exists, God exists, um, mm-hmm. and you know, and, yeah, you just get reminders, but now it's, it's definitely not like that, and um, he's actually showing me his true self even more without all of the, re- the reminders, and... Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's through little things definitely like um like I said he talks to me through movies um and actually just looking outside at nature and he's making me understand life more and how valuable it is like in everything not just us but in everything and um he's he actually showed me <laughs> um like a, a great thing last I think it was two weeks ago and there was a thunderstorm mm-hmm. 
and I just went outside on my porch because I love the thunder and stuff. So I was just watching, and um, I was like, all right, God, I want, like, a big lightning strike. I want a big thunder, like, roar or whatever, like, for me. Cause it was starting to calm down. And I was like, but no, I'm not done yet. I want more, right? <laughs> and so I was like, all right, God, give me, give me a thunder or a lightning strike. And he wasn't doing it. I, like, I was suspicious at one point that he gave it to me, but I was like, no, like, prove it to me, like, this is it, that this is for me. If you're going to do something for me, make it known that it's for me. You know, I'm being kind of bossy because, like, sometimes you got to demand things from God because God is your, also your friend. <laughs> <laughs> scared of him. <laughs> and so I was just waiting there, and I was testing him, and I was like, I'm not leaving until you show me, and like, show me something. <laughs> and... I was just out on my porch, and it's, it was probably, like, 10 minutes past, and I still didn't get my lightning strike, but, like, it was so weird because this has never happened before, but I was just staring outside my porch, and all of a sudden, a rainbow appeared, like, right oh. in front of my It wasn't there. It just, like, slowly started to appear, and I just, I was like, God, are, are you messing with me right now? Like, I <laughs> for this, but, like, this is better. Like, what? I was just confused. Like, he put me, like... I couldn't say anything, but I was so happy because, like, I knew it was for me, and, like, nobody can tell you that rainbow wasn't for me. That's right. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Damn, oh, my God. That, yeah. is, that is the best story I have ever heard in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. You know yeah. what? You, know, you are not the only – let me tell you, Riley, you are not the only one. I do that all the time. I right. like, Jesus, look here. Let me tell you what I need right now, and I'm so right. serious. I, listen, yeah. because that's what you, you know, like, he's your friend. So you, you have a friend? You, Yes. Like, come on, I bet you won't do it. I can tell you, I bet you won't do it. Like, I double dog Gary. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. And it's so funny because actually me and my mom just yesterday were talking about wonder and about nature and about life and how sometimes, like, we walk through this earth and we are not amazed at just everything. Like, we, mm-hmm. were, we were sitting in the parking lot and we were looking at a tree. And we were talking about all the things that were happening with that tree that we're not really, you know, every day, like, aware of. Like, there's, like, photosynthesis happening. There's stuff mm-hmm. going in the ground, like, the roots. There's all kinds of stuff, like, happening. And we're not aware of it. Or, like, if we see a bee flying by and, you know, we just kind of wave it off and make sure it doesn't sting us. But the, the, the fact that that bee is so important to, like, the ecological system and about, you know, pollination and what happens if we lose the bees. So... It is so cool to hear you talk about that because, really, there is so much wonder in in nature, and it kind of it basically like proves God. And so I'm just, I'm really right now I'm like snotting and crying. It's ridiculous. <laughs> because I thought that, that when they get it, was amazing. Oh, you know, yeah, absolutely. I'm so I glad I'm not on video because I look crazy right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so definitely thing, with the the plants part, uh, he's letting me realize that life definitely does have an importance like what you're saying and I'm starting to see it in a perspective of yeah like no that plant can't talk no that plant can't scream when you cut it down but that does not mean it's not hurting and that does not mean it's not injured and just like if we couldn't talk or something like that and we obviously see when animals are hurt and when animals aren't okay but I'm trying to like let people know that it's it's more than that like it's not being a tree hug Valuing actual life. Yeah, Come that's awesome. Absolutely. That's awesome. Valuing you actual life. Oh, Riley. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. And that's what I, I was. I was uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, um, Reverend. Go ahead. No, I was. I'm. I'm there with the. the cause you put me in a season. God has put me in a season of just um, observing and awareness of Him, and I can see Him in growth. You know, I talk about. I see how the girls have grown. Um, but right now, you know, I'm still growing. Every single day I'm growing. It may be hard to, to recognize, but I have to um, just be real with myself about I'm not at the same place now that I was even as where I was last year. But he talks through these seeds. I will eat some. I, I don't even want to eat anything um, that doesn't have a seed. If it's supposed to, if it grew, <laughs> Had a seed. I don't understand about the seedless thing because I want the seed. So I take the seed after I, I've eaten it. I put it in some dirt. And based upon oh, yeah. this, oh, yeah, so you I'm see watching it. all this grow. You should see her port. She got she got a greenhouse back there. <laughs> <laughs> I am 
absolutely amazed when it grows. So when it stops growing, I wonder why. Somebody said, just give it time, give it some sun, and give it some water. Mm-hmm. Yesterday I went outside and I saw the blossoms. And when, after the blossoms come the fruit. And God is just speaking to me so much about that, just the, the, the growing process and being aware of him. I can't make it. I can't make the water, but he provides it. And we get the fruit from it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. For them to have done that so early in life, it's like, <laughs> Lord, who yeah. have your way, oh, God. <laughs> and it was like, uh, it also, too, when I was talking to uh, some of you, know, you, uh, you play the flute, and I was talking about how I love orchestras and how um, sometimes I watch, you know, the the, the composer or the uh the conductor, when he waves that wand and one instrument, uh, a group of instruments come in and then and then in the orchestra, then he raised the wand again on this side and then some more come in and, and then they all make this beautiful music, but it seems to translate and looks like how all creation is, that God has everything working all in, in harmony together, making a beautiful sound. So when we look at things, when we look at creation, you know, it really speaks to who God is, right? And, um, so let me ask this question, though. All right. And this is the question, like, now, as young black females, uh, young Christian black females, um, how do you feel uh, when you're in environments like college and high school when the life that you live might not be the, the status quo? How do you feel and how do you show your, show your, show your, uh, your walk before others and, and, and try to pull people in now? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say it, it ha- it's been a growing process It's been difficult And I feel like I'm finally getting into understanding On how to walk through it um, Because for a long time I was like I want to be in that crowd I'm like I'm a cool person Like Mom tells right. me it every day <laughs> but, <laughs> Right <laughs> Yeah but I'm Like I have friends but Sometimes they weren't the most loyal friends or I'm like, I, I know I have good things to offer to people, but I just kept feeling excluded. And and so that those are the issues I kept um, going through. And I think I finally come to a point where I understand that that separation comes with the territory, as my mom would say to me. Um, I think we spent so much time, or I personally just spent so much time wanting to be a part of a crowd. Um, and also being a Christian, that makes it harder because you're like, you you got to watch what you say, and sometimes you can't be a part of certain crowds all the time. But um, I, came, I, I finally just had to realize that God is separating me for a reason. And you sometimes, say- yeah, and if I'm not with certain people and in, in certain groups, it's sometimes for a reason, and, and eventually he will put me with certain people. Um, so that that has been an interesting journey for me, but um, I think it took me a while to just finally understand that I may be separ- I'm separated, but it's for the good in the end. Mm. <laughs> yeah, um, and with me, I'm also the exact same way. Like I, like I told you before, we're we're going through the exact same things, just at different ages. Um, but it it's, it hurts. <laughs> it really does. Like mm-hmm. you, you do want everything everybody wants. There's no way to around right. it. No, oh, I don't want. It. No, it hurts being on the outside. Um, and mm-hmm. majority of the time, I didn't like it. But I think these last two years um, of my high school left, I've come to realize what people are bringing to my life and. If they weren't doing anything good for me, then, you know, just start to slowly drift away. And, like, people were starting to, like, wonder what's up or, like, like we had, like, like something going on in the, in the beginning of the year, but I don't know what happened or something like that. And I, I couldn't even really explain it. It's just, like, you, you weren't good for me, and I, <laughs> I had to go. But either way, I knew that I didn't fit in, so it was just being right. done with forcefulness of it all, forcing you to be my friend, like forcing us to get up and go somewhere. So if it's not natural or like edifying to you then just Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
That's beautiful. <laughs> and I ask that question because it's other young it's other young people that's right now they know that it's something else pulling on their hearts and, 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 and pulling on their heartstrings, and they know that they don't fit in to the norm of what the crowds may want to do and, want, and, and might, the direction they're going. And sometimes and people fight with that stuff, you know, and, and they know it. Um, so like. You know, I ask that for encouragement for those that might be listening, because it doesn't have to be just young young people. It's people that's that's my age or older that's still trying to fit in the crowd. And once we when we try to fit in the crowd that we never belong in, we never really find out who our true identity is anyway. So it's important to kind of separate from the crowd. And and and, and it's beautiful that you two know that God is separating you for a purpose, and that that purpose is great and it's good for you in the end. So, you know, I hope someone was encouraged by what these two young women just shared. And remember, that he just selected you for a reason. Right. The, and even also, but, it's not even that you separate yourself from the crowd. I was kicked out of the crowd. I was kicked out of multiple <laughs> crowds. <laughs> and that's also, like, what, what hurt the most. It's not even that you, like, didn't want to fit in. It's like, you just, Yeah. <laughs> They just didn't let you fit in, didn't even give you a chance to fit in. So yeah. that's also what you have to accept that, like, of course, with somebody said, it comes with the territory. Yeah, and I think, like, that's true embodying being in it, in the world but not of the world. Like, yeah. they just naturally see something on you because there will be times, like, we don't carry, we don't go around carrying Bibles. We don't go around quoting scriptures. We're kind people, but we we also want to have fun. And mm-hmm. But, like, it just uh, it just naturally happened from elementary right. school, middle to high school, even to college. Like, you want to be a part of those groups, but they, I think what they were seeing was just Christ in us. And and yeah. it just took time to realize that it's yeah. not bad. It's it not personal. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, yeah. but it's not bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's just the idea that that could God really be separating me to for Himself? And then I yeah. think about how He is providing for me and taking care of me, and how He's communing with me and talking with me. And a lot of that would not happen if I had a whole lot of distractions in my life, you know. And um, <clears throat> Just getting it early, understanding that God, perhaps God is setting me aside for himself. Because if if I was supposed to fit in, I would have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the signs were getting too obvious. Like, (laughs) (laughs) it was just getting mean at one point. (laughs) Or, like, like, everybody would tell me or, like, compliment me and stuff like that off of, like, physical physicality or whatever. And from the outside, yeah, it looks like I'm supposed to fit in. But there was too many... Like confusion of why why yeah. can't I like I mm-hmm. don't even know how to explain right. it. Uh huh, but I feel it. But you can feel it because yeah. we're made image, you know, and, <laughs> and we're sensitive to yeah. what concerns him. And when mm-hmm. when people are doing things um, out around us that in God, you know, what are we going to do? Yeah, you know, we're going to stand. You know, that ain't <laughs> Yes, indeed. Absolutely. And you yeah. know what? I'm going to go real natural for the moment because as part of the crew of Natural Hair Care Wearing Sisters, <laughs> was there any – stick? like, for real, like, I know even as an adult when I decided to go natural um, and what I had to go through in my mind about being accepted or what people would think, even as you think about, like, even some of those, like, small things about, like, wearing your hair in natural styles, was there any kind of, like, angst or anything with that? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> okay. Well, so I I officially went natural my freshman year of high school, and so the goal was just always get that length, get your hair long, just be natural, don't do too much to it. Um, and so I think during that time we got the compliments would come. There wasn't like a lot of backlash about it, and I think that was during the time when a lot of African American women were were kind of going along with that and just starting to accept each, accept their, themselves. But mm-hmm. it's funny how recently I'm getting more, like I'm getting backlash because, um, so I de- decided to do my second big chop. So my hair got mm-hmm. to like almost 10 inches, but I was just like, you know what? I have so, I, my life is so busy. I, I honestly don't have time to take care of my hair. And I was just like, my hair, my hair texture is very coil, like super corkscrew curly. Um mm-hmm takes so much time to dry it and just a lot of maintenance. Like, I love it, but I was just like, okay, it's time for something new. And I cut my hair, 
and back to like maybe about three inches, and that's when the backlash started to come in like, Summer, why'd you do that? Or why why'd you cut your hair? And I'm like, because I felt I needed to, and it's it's naturally me, and um, and I just started wearing my little afro and just going around, and then I I, I noticed people. Um, and these are mostly African American women looking kind of down on me, like just staring at my hair. And I'm like, oh, so you don't want to say anything? Just giving those looks, <laughs> like you know when somebody's looking down on you. But I, I wasn't right, letting right. that. Happen. But I have started feeling more of that, the angst, the the backlash mm-hmm. about. So you you can do something to your hair, but you shouldn't probably do that. And yeah, it, it's been a <laughs> just journey, I'd say. Um, and I think that's been a part of me just becoming comfortable with who I am naturally mm-hmm. and spiritually. Like yep. physically, I have I have coily hair, and that's okay. I don't necessarily always have to straighten it. I don't always have to put something on it, braid it. Um, yeah, it, <laughs> it's been interesting, but it's definitely been a learning process that I've grown better with. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. And also with me, definitely, it's been, oof, it was hard. It was rough. Um, I went natural eighth grade, and um, I didn't necessarily do it right, so I was kind of looking crazy, you know, just as a a little girl. You don't really know what you're doing. Um, And so that was that was definitely rough, trying to accept yourself while others definitely aren't accepting you. Um, but then I started learning how to do different hairstyles and, you know, getting the hang of it. And, like, I started loving it, and I, I wanted it to be bigger. But then, like, I also saw this video the other day that, like, shook me awake <laughs> and told me that, because I have 4C hair, so it's there's no pattern, no nothing. It just webs together, and it's really, really thick. So at least Summer has the coils. I have no texture at all. <laughs> so I I always would have to blow dry it and, of course, shrinkage. It would be, like, one inch when it's shrunken down, but, like, ten inches when you blow dry it. And so I always found myself, like, manipulating it, and I still do. And this, it was a YouTube video, and this girl told me, like, you do not accept your 4 hair. hair. If you have to keep bantu knotting, if you have to keep – twisting it and blow drying it, you do not accept your natural hair. And I was like, oh, you know, she, she's kind of right. <laughs> so I can't, it's still hard. I, I still haven't completely accepted it, um, but there's definitely still time to continue to try to love your natural self, to love yourself. So that's where I am. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's yeah. I love it because I'm I'm 50 years old. And still dealing with it, so I, I found my way to deal with it. No. <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> You're yeah. talking about four C and three B and kinky coily. You know, I'm, I, it's it's something that you just have to accept for yourself because everybody's not into the same thing. You know, yeah. I don't want the chemicals, and but it's a, it's a certain um, way that I like to look. Right. And, mm-hmm. and it's okay. Everybody may not like it. Yeah, but, and that's what's important, you know. And that's going and, back to the identity aspect too, you know. Basically, um, because you know our identity is not just who we are as a person; it's so we choose our styles and how we choose what we wear and things of that nature as well. Because you see our identity and, and the things that we choose. Um, and I thank God for the psalmist when the psalmist said that I am fifth and wonderfully made. You know, as, <laughs> Uh, creation, uh, and that he has specifically laid out what your eye color is going to look like, what your skin color is going to be, you know, what area you're going to be living in, you know, all the scripture tells us all this. So God, he didn't just say, okay, wow, poof, Riley and Summer are going to be here. You know, no, God, just, it wasn't just a whim, you know, he knew what hairstyle, what hair texture he would give you because it fits exactly who he made, you know, and mm-hmm. that's the thing about it, that people need to find their beauty and who God created them to be because you are beautiful in the eyes of God. The Bible tells me, said, let God be true and every man a liar. You know what I'm saying? I so, know like, if, right. if nobody can say, say so. Right, if nobody can <laughs> clap or celebrate your head, so- if other women don't like the way you do your head, understand that God says, Hey, boo boo, listen here. You are fifthly <laughs> and wonderfully made. You understand? That I did that. You know, he said, <laughs> I did that. You know, so 
I look at that even myself because, like, as growing up, I was always a small um, individual, you know. So, you know, but at the same time, it got to a point where I start. well, uh, you know, my, my goddaughter's uh, mother and, and a couple of other friends of mine, they say sometimes I, I can be conceited, but I think it's more like confidence now. Like, I didn't got past that place <laughs> where I was, like, worried about what somebody else said. you. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I know I look good. It's like, <laughs> it's like, nah. but, but the thing about it is, is that it came to a place that I started, you know, seeing myself through the eyes of God. And that's what we have to do. You know, that's what the people of God have to do. So, you know, as and, and, and as you grow, I mean, you just get to a place where you become comfortable with yourself. And it's beautiful that you all are doing that now. And it's a lot of young people that still fight with identity. So right now it's like, as you struggle through certain certain aspects of identity, you know, um, was there any character or per, well, I should say person, any person in the Bible that you kind of related to that kind of gave you confidence to be who you are now? Hmm. Let me think. I think I'd probably say. One Jesus, but also Paul. So I, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm like a. I'm super big on like following lifestyles or like looking, but like I do pay attention. Um, so I, I like the way Paul would talk. Just he he would just you could just see the confidence in in him and also Jesus. Like he he didn't have to necessarily prove himself, but he spoke truth and. If they didn't, if the crowds didn't understand, he would just leave it at that. He he spoke it, and then he was quiet. And I think that's that's an important thing for me to a good reminder for me, um, as you were kind of touching on, um, like knowing knowing God's truth, the Father's truth, and moving on. Um, I, I just I admired their confidence that they had. So yeah, mm. those would be my two. Amen. Um, yeah, this is this is a cheap answer for me, but <laughs> definitely Jesus, um, of course. Um, he, like, as I started growing up, I started realizing what it meant for, like, Jesus to undergo every temptation, like, of the world. And, and then that's everything, and that's heavy. So it started to let me realize that that you were definitely not alone and that Jesus definitely knows everything you're feeling. It's not just somebody's like, oh, yeah, I understand, I understand, I get what you're going through. Like, no, he really gets what you're going through. So mm -hmm. that was comforting in my life of of how to keep moving forward, keep pressing on. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that's awesome. That's that's definitely awesome. You know, um, me, I kind of like relate a little bit to more like a Joshua and a Daniel and a Paul. But then, left some of my friends tell me they say that um, I'm like a Peter because I'm always jumping out there, right? <laughs> 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 but but the thing about it is is that it's beautiful to be able to find um, you know someone to identify with in the word. Um, as you see the characteristics in yourself or I, as you model that in your life. Um, and I, I have this, you know, this is like, now when we talk about all topics here, you know, it's important to talk about all topics too, you know, and as um, young women, you know, growing up in this day and time, um, do you feel that a lot of young women now are basically trying to, because we had talk, you know, talking about the still topic of identity, trying to fit, uh, the mold that certain men might want them to fit in and they never really find themselves? Or do you feel like that you see a lot of people just being who they are? I'm just talking about in your age group. Mm -hmm. um, I, that, that is an interesting kind of topic to think about because I feel like there are levels to it. Um, mm -hmm. I have been noticing, like, with YouTube and being able to see different people's lifestyles, um, especially like in the natural hair community, people are starting to embrace themselves. So I wouldn't knock it down completely and say I don't see people my, in my age group um, like just being themselves because I, I will say I have, but in the grand scheme of things, I still do see that oppressive state of mind that we're kind of still feeling, um, the, the, the pressure to see looking beautiful, the pressure to always be on and be aware, like, 
though people express their beauty in different ways, I still see it, those different types of expression. Um, and, yet, like, we know this is a time when you're still finding yourself. So I understand that, like, that people are still on their journeys. But I would say I, I do see that desire to still look a certain way mm-hmm. and carry and talk a certain way. Um, and, and that's just been ingrained in our society. And that's something, like, we're honestly trying to figure out how to balance ourselves. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and definitely baking off of YouTube. Like, YouTube has definitely, like, grown immensely over the years. Basically, it's like another TV for our generation. So everybody right. YouTube. And um, I see videos sometimes about um, tips on what guys like or what guys don't like. And I just I just look at those videos like what, <laughs> and it's, it's telling you what to be or what to look like or how to look like, and I even hear it in music of like like men saying measurements of a body Girl, type that girls like that. or girls should have, <laughs> and they're just so drastic <laughs> and it's just like yes yeah, some women might have those body types but it's just so unachievable <laughs> like ultimately and it. It saddens me that girls do definitely fall into this because all I've heard was, oh, i got to lose weight, i got to lose weight, all of high school. And, like, oh, I'm going on this diet. Like, some girl I know was always on a diet. Well, I was just eating or whatever I wanted to, like, look good, you did. <laughs> That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it was just always toward I have to lose weight or, like, this new term is be sick. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, I don't – just have your body type. I don't know. It, it's I'm still at where you just unachievable because it's not you. <laughs> you just got to be you. I, I'm still at when you said, I just like to, to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Everything is fire. Me Goodbye. too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And, and we eat. So, you know, I'm learning to make better um, food choices based upon, you know, my health <clears> and you know, but not based upon every. One thing I learned is everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I'm entitled to my opinion, and another person is entitled to their opinion, and yeah. they can think whatever they want to think, and it's okay because I've learned that everything is not for everybody. If a person is looking for another person with a certain body image or a certain um, frame or certain qualities that I don't have. It's okay because it just lets me know that they're not looking for me. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's right. Yep, that's mm-hmm. right. That's right. And that's it. So, so if you had an opportunity now, well, you do have an opportunity because um, it might be somebody listening right now that might be struggling with that. You know, won't you minister to them right quick and give them a word about that specifically so they can be encouraged and move forward in their walk and in their perception and their identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Ms. Novina was saying, if somebody's looking for qualities or characteristics that aren't you, they are not looking for you. Um, Just know that you're beautiful in yourself, and if you you like a person and you're, like, quote, unquote, falling in love with them, but they're not falling in love back with you, just know that they weren't for you. Um, Crushes are very real, (laughs) but um, just, just know that... God has better for you, um, and then that's really important to to just wait for the right one. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I heard I, I did hear her say two words for you, because like she said, that these things may not, I may not possess that, or another person may not possess it, so they're not the one for me. And mm-hmm. yeah. God does have someone out there for me. You know, right. it's not. And the other person who doesn't like what I bring to the table, it's okay. Because it's mm-hmm. going to be somebody out there for them. Right. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, Summer, could you just say, like, a quick word of prayer over over your generation and just speak a little life over them about, you know, their identity and their walk and, and just anything that is on your heart? Right. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to say... It took me a while to learn that I don't have to please everybody, um, mm-hmm. and that that has been a struggle. 
And I like the main thing, the main nugget I got is you can't. It's impossible. That it's it's hard for people to understand that. It's hard for me to like I go every day trying to fight and be like, Oh, I gotta look set their ex- expectations. Um but being in this world it's impossible. So I just to to my generation, um I I just pray that people find them they find Christ and that they find themselves in Christ. Um I mm. say being who you are that's the best thing you can be and um I just pray for encouragement and just peace in the minds of my generation, um and everybody mm-hmm. really. Um to know that you are enough, just being who you are and, and just to let God show you. Um yeah, that that's the main thing I have to say. Yeah. Amen to that. You are enough. Yes. I, I feel like that should be a T shirt. I yeah. am enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. So actually, um, really quick to just flip it on us. Do you think there are for you personally, do you have any questions for us? Um or or questions that you think um this generation needs to hear or like things like, you know what I always wondered and was always afraid to ask or do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but what do you, like, seeing from another generation, what do you think about us? Where do you think we're going? How do you feel about our generation? Okay, so. Reverend Curtis, go on. Go on That's now. a good one. Okay, well, for me and how I see the gener- your generation, I don't believe that your generation is a lost cause. Um so many people have written your generation off as if you, you're disrespectful, um, that you don't uh, have any focus. And um, what I've found over time, and actually it came out even in this interview, that um, that y'all not being heard, you know. And I believe that just like people felt about my generation because, you know, I wasn't the best of, best of children. I wasn't the best of individuals as a teenager either. You know, and people looked at me and thought that I will probably never amount to anything and not even be who I am today. So what I see in your generation, I see your generation that's looking for someone to really believe in them, to really pour in them, to really understand them, to really listen to them, and to really help them, not judge them, but help them get to that place where they can really be that next wave of great individuals. Because mm-hmm. I really believe that the, that the generation that we look at, that you, your generation, I really believe that it's going to be a great wave that's going to come from your generation that's going to reignite the fire in the hearts of individuals who will let those flames burn and, and go away. So I really believe that my, 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 my belief in your generation is so great and I just wish that everybody else would get that get that idea because if they get that idea, then they will realize, you know, that the more you invest in someone or one of the youth, that the more that they will see and understand who they really are and how precious they are to the next thing that's con- that God is doing in the earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I'd like to just piggyback off of that as well because um, that that's like my mission in life is, be available for the young adults because I know I hear a lot of negative things about. Them. I see a lot of negative things, and it it makes me come back to say, what was modeled before them? You know, some some people may not have done what we believe they should have done as far as teaching them or demonstrating the love of God, manners, respect before them, and people can only do what they they know to do. Mm-hmm. You know, so I I believe I'm here to. To um, demonstrate God's love, to listen. <laughs> it's amazing when you put yourself in positions, hear what the young people are saying, and you listen. A lot of them are crying out for help. They know something, but something's not. They didn't have to struggle and fight things. So then, therefore, we keep hearing this entitlement mentality or entitlement generation. You know, when I think about my child and how she grew up, she didn't grow up the same way I grew up. Or hmm. I want to believe our value of a work ethic, the, the respect and manners. 
But I, I want to be here for the young adults to not judge them, not criticize them, but to lead in God's you know. Great. And for me, I think, um, and the one thing that stuck out to me in what uh, Reverend Novena said was entitlement. And I love that word because what I think it really means is I think that this generation, your generation, has the ability to walk in a complete rest that none of else, none of the previous generations have. I think, and I don't know the statistics on it, but I feel like this is probably mm-hmm. the most unchurched generation, and I think that that's a really good thing. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. those of us who have grown up in traditional churches, we've kind of – um, put God in a box, um, and that's a shout-out to my mom's uh, teaching that she's doing every Thursday at 12 noon. <laughs> but anywho, um, we really have, we have limitations on who we think God is, what we think he can do, how we think he shows up. You know what I mean? I think there are a lot of us who, if we see someone who says they're a Christian and they have a tattoo or they have a weird piercing, we think that they can't be saved. And so I think that what your generation has the ability to do is to kind of kick that box down the street and around the corner and to really move and who God really is, because God isn't in four walls of traditional churches. And not to say that, you know, God doesn't, you know, visit and he's not um, a part of, you know, our religious organizations, but I believe that what you all have the ability to do is really show forth what God really meant when he said that we are the church as a people. Like you have the ability to walk like Riley, some or you as individuals have the ability to walk in this earth completely whole as the church. And so when you show up in a classroom, you're the church. Or when you show up, you know, um, to perform or do something with your flute, you are the church. And so you have ability to infect in a way that we haven't. Because a lot of us, especially who are church, you know, we come into these four walls every Sunday and we, you know, we come and we meet God and we say hallelujah and that's it. And we don't bring that out. We don't bring that out into our workforce. We don't even bring that into our families. Hmm. But I think you all have the ability to walk in like supernatural power and miracles. I think that also some of the things that because you have grown up in this kind of uh, technological boom, that your minds have the ability to go way further than ours did. Like, you know, some of us still struggling with, you know, how to use uh, iPhones and such. But because you all grew up in just um, this great expansion that spiritually you are prime and ready to kind of like just move into those greater things. Like, you know, past raising people from the dead, past calming storms and seas. Like, I just feel like in my mm-hmm. dream that you guys are just going to take off and take flight. It's say something. Awesome. I'm just excited I about say it. Say something. <laughs> yeah, I believe it too. One of, one of our listeners actually said um, that it is amazing the insight the young people have at this young age. While it is hard to imagine how much further our generation will be along if our hunger was as great as this. And, you know, this is this is a, a listener that this uh, uh gave this comment and they're listening to you and seeing how much insight you all have uh, and how much hunger you have. Also, so I, 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 I totally agree with everything Mr. Mm-hmm. Joy just said and Reverend Rovina just said. And um, wow, I'm, I'm clapping it up over here, celebrating doing the old, the walk and all that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so what? You all right, better so. go on. <laughs> Okay, real quick, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and I'm going to play one of our commercials, okay? We'll be back shortly. Good morning, family. This is Bold and Beautiful Talk Radio. You can follow us on Facebook at Bold and Beautiful WCS and on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Bold and Beautiful WCS. That's B O L D N B U T I F U L W C S. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Please check out our website at whenchristianspeak.com for ways to give and sow into the kingdom. Thanks for tuning in to our broadcast. We look forward to introducing young talent and sharing exciting stories with our listeners around the world. So if you have a gift, talent, story, or information to share with us, 
spoken word, poetry, book, or song to share, if you're an entrepreneur or musician, please contact us at bnbwcstr2016 at gmail.com or on any of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. All right, and we're back. We, again, this is Bold and Beautiful, When Christians Speak Talk Radio with Reverend Novena, Reverend Curtis, and myself, Minister Jordana. And, we, of course, we have these lovely ladies, um, Riley and Summer Mensa with us. And um, funny enough that we, uh, this commercial was about social media. Great segue, social media, what? Mm-hmm. Come on. Ooh. What? <laughs> you yeah. got to be careful uh-huh. with um, um, <laughs> I I think it's being completely abused. I I from, from what I'm seeing, I hate every bit of it. Um, it's <laughs> distraction to what's supposed to actually matter, and it makes me mm-hmm. sad. Um, and I. It was funny because I actually had a talk with my family the other day, and um, about how we're using it, and it's it also correlates to the the fact of that we are better than this world, and that mm-hmm. the activities of this world, and even though it seems like you know innocent of like you know I'm just checking my phone, I'm just checking like what's going on, what's the point, stuff like that, but. But there's so much more that we can do. We can elevate our minds so much more, and um, it's it's a distraction. And I I do it. I'm not even saying that I don't do it, but after I do it, it makes me feel ugh inside. It makes me feel gross, <laughs> and I feel like I've just wasted the day. And um, I, it should just be changed <laughs> in some sort of way. I definitely understand. I definitely right. understand it. <laughs> um, I'd say, yeah, I'm I'm definitely wrapped in it. Like I'm not, I haven't taken a full plunge. I'm not drowning in social media, but like, I, <laughs> I I have Instagram, Snapchat, fa- Facebook. Um, and I guess I agree with Riley. Um, you have to be careful with what you see because I can I can just. It, it it really is like an addiction. Like I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna check oh, yeah. how people are doing, or maybe if somebody decided to like tag me in a post or how many likes I got, and it, it it's 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 a self destructive type of thing. That's what I've realized. Like I go in and I'm like I'll be fine, but every time I leave, I'm like, oh, I kind of feel bad, or I'm like, right. well, what are they thinking since they didn't comment or they didn't like or it it just creates ground for a lot of heady stuff, really. It does. Um, and it destroys, it, it's kind of gradually destroying the initial mean of communication we we always had, which mm-hmm. is talk. Um, and and right. honestly, I can say, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Riley can relate, we don't like talking on the phone anymore. And, and we're, I'm kind of... <laughs> To talk on like the phone do, yeah, time. I think this is a problem with our generation. Yeah. We do not <laughs> like phone calls. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I will gladly say just text me or like my dad, he leaves me voicemails and I'm like, why don't you just text me? <laughs> like, right, right. right. Like, like, <laughs> the, the change. <laughs> in like generations and like some of it's good and some of it is not so good mm. and I just feel. We just need to be more careful of what we're allowing into our system. And right. that also brings us to, like, understanding that our, our means of communication are changing. Um, yes. And it, it is becoming more efficient. And I won't say, like, like calling is, is bad um, and text messaging isn't bad either. Um, we just have to be careful with how we're using it and how we're doing the initial, like, the main point of it all is connecting to each other. And I think the issue is that social media and our new technology is getting in in the way of that, of connecting and relating to one another. Um, Yeah. Also, like, because different platforms do different things for you, and definitely Instagram 
is a platform that makes you make up your own life. It's kind of like a like a storybook, and you post what mm-hmm. you want. You you edit to make you look how you want to look, and you post where you want to go and stuff like that. So it it definitely thinks on individualism more than togetherness. Even th- even though it's supposed to link you together, it's it's comparisons left and right, and makes you feel doubtful, and it just tears you apart, basically. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And so it's so interesting because, you know, I myself am not immune to it. And I recently heard a study that said that, you know, that there are certain age groups that spend like seven to nine hours on their phone a day and mm-hmm. how really the, it is it is set up to, to make you addicted, that you feel like you have to check your phone yeah. every time it lights up or blinks. There's like this sensory thing that happens, and your brain is like, oh, let me see what's going on. Yeah, and I definitely know even – and actually I had – I only got on social media because – um, of this show and because I just wanted to spread Jesus because, you know, I had started on Facebook, you know, many years ago when it first came out. And I was like at work checking Facebook. And I was like, I cannot do this. I can't, right. I can't live like this. So right. I completely got off and I was off for like up until uh, last year. So probably like seven, eight years, I just wasn't a part of it. And it was so funny because I was like missing life apparently. You know, people, mm-hmm. children were being born and, you know, there were, you know, baby showers I wasn't invited to because I wasn't on Facebook to get the Facebook invite for it. So it's really interesting. But absolutely. And I think um, what, especially now that you guys are so self-aware, is that it can be a great tool because like in the Bible, when, um, like, say the centurion soldier said, hey, my servant is sick, can you send a word? He's like, you don't even have to go there, you can send a word. I totally believe, if you all believe, that you can send a word over Facebook, Instagram, or something that changes somebody's life. So I think it can totally be used, you know, for good, you know, air quotes, that because you all have power and that you are speaking spirits and you have life in you, that you can put a word out on Facebook that changes someone's life, that, you know, creates a miracle in some other country. So I think, and and my hope and my prayer is that, um, we would start to use it to actually, um, just like Jesus did, send a word to somebody, to encourage somebody. I know that that is generally my main goal for being on social media is that I just want to put Jesus out there. Like, if it's really not about Jesus, you know, you know, you know, there's always the occasional selfie. You always, you know, got to smile. Mm-hmm. But um, that that would be the main goal. And even, let me just, quick testimony for real. I was really hurt. Like, even still, um, Bold and Beautiful, us as a group, are on Instagram and I was really in my feelings because I we still haven't gotten like to a hundred followers yet. I'm like, Jesus, what am I doing wrong? Why don't I have a hundred followers? And so he was like, I need you to calm down though, because sometimes <laughs> we look at number, we look at likes, and he's like, it's, it's so it's not about that. It's it's about the one. So whether you have one follower or ten thousand, you know, right. just put me out there and let me do the rest. And so yeah. listen, it's been a learning lesson for me, even as you know a. Uh, a seasoned adult, bless the Lord, <laughs> about, you know, what, what social media is and how you can be, like, trapped in it. Mm-hmm. And, and I was listening to you, Jordana, about this technology, use of technology, and I believe um, that's what's pulling me in is just this broadcast. It's, it's amazing how we don't know who is listening or how many lives this one broadcast will touch. But I'm grateful Amen. that we have a platform in social media mm-hmm. where people can Tap in, even if they can't tap in right now. It may be two o'clock in the morning. Somebody's looking for something, and they just may run across this um, broadcast. So, yeah. for whoever will tune in, God got a word for them. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I, just just to relate, this is a quick testimony as well too. When I first got saved, I gave my life to the Lord on January fifth, nineteen ninety nine. And at that time, I was uh, in jail. I was uh, in actually Prince George's County um, detention center at the time. And God would use me and send me to the bullpen, uh, even when I didn't have to have have to go to court. And I'm like, I will enter the bullpen, and the conversation would be off the wall for like ten minutes, but it never failed. Within ten minutes, I'd be in the middle of the floor telling everybody about Jesus, and everybody quiet and listening, and someone would be left behind. So people will always was getting. It would seem like God would always. Use me to say, uh, use me to be an uh, intervention in someone's life, and they would get saved and give their life to the Lord. So when I end up getting my time and um, going to the penitentiary, 
and I was trying to, you know, I was, I was, telling, I was ministering to everybody. I'm talking about to CEOs, <laughs> everything, you know, and then guys that have been down for 20, 17, 25, 30 years, we like, hey, young blood, I didn't try that already. It ain't, it ain't work for me. So I was discouraged because no one was getting saved, right? And then, mm-hmm. um, but during that time when I was in the county jail, I had another trial I had to go back for. So when I went back to the county. Um, I walked in this, uh, into the unit and I heard somebody say, praise the Lord, brother, curse, praise the Lord. So I'm wondering, like, I'm really discouraged at this time, though, and I'm wondering, like, who would know my name like that? And I run up to see who it was, and it was this Muslim brother that I had been was on detail with. Me and him used to go back and forth for 11 months straight. We went back and forth about the word of God, and he would mm-hmm. always try to disprove the word of God. But it seemed like God always would just say something through me that kind of, you know, was chipping away, but I couldn't see it. And then he, and when I come back, he says, praise the Lord, brother Curtis, praise the Lord. I'm like, what you say? He said, praise the Lord in Jesus' name. I'm like, what? <laughs> like that. So, oh my. But, but it, was, it, 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 was, it was what I needed to encourage me to realize that sometimes we don't see the work that God is doing, but we just need to keep doing the work. And um, mm-hmm. so, to relate that to social media is that, I've, I've, I've realized even though some people will see your post, they might not like it, uh, but, that's the, but the reason is they don't always let people know that they're on there and they're looking. So someone told me, says, yeah, man, uh, a guy called me actually from the penitentiary, and he was telling me that his uncle – um, told him, say, yeah, your man be putting a lot of good stuff on, fa- on on Facebook and social media and stuff, man. And he said, man, I be like, I be waiting for that word, man. And, and then I told him, I said, well, he don't never like nothing, right? But it made me realize that there's so many people that's listening and looking at the message that they ain't got to like it because what's happening is, mm-hmm. is God is working in their lives even though we don't see it or hear it. So um, definitely social media is a platform to impact the world, and you never know who you might be touching at that time with social media, but it's important to make sure that the content of what we're putting on there will be something that will impact the world and that the world will later on impact itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Amen. That. Glory. Mm-hmm. Be to Jesus. Yes. Um, so let's delve into, and I have in my brain two areas. I don't know which one I'm going to go in. Wiley, you said something several, several, several minutes ago about mm-hmm. even um, seeing God in movies. And, mm-hmm. you know, we have already mixed it up about how you can even go to a movie and you get a word from the Lord like you weren't even expecting. Can you give, like, an example of that? Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. I got to calm myself down. All right. Um, I know. I know, girl. Uh, second time I heard her give a shout, God, when it was... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a list. I'll, I'll keep the list to a minimum, but uh, definitely a few movies are uh, Interstellar, um, Arrival, um, uh, Doctor Strange, but then I could also go see animations like Kung Fu Panda, like a lot of them have like a lot of words of wisdom and you just got to go in listening. Um, Like you just can't be watching, but you know, God starts turning the wheels in my head and I'm in the theater just bawling my eyes out or something or I just walk out (laughs) so excited. (laughs) And um, it's, it, I don't. I don't want to get too into detail because I won't stop. But <laughs> uh, wait, wait. But no. But can you give? Can you give? Pick one of those movies and can you pick like an example of a scene and what, like what, how the Lord spoke to you through the scene in one of those movies? Yeah, um, definitely uh, Arrival. Um, okay. And it's it's way it was talking about time and and how God uses you in different segments of your life and not just. Not just one, like not just the present, but he definitely also uses your past to to help you. And of course, you may not always know what you're what you're going through at the moment, because a lot of the time, mm-hmm. um, actress Amy Adams during the movie was confused as to why she knew something or why she was doing this or why she was doing that. But also, the people in her life were helping her figure out what her true purpose was or what her uh-huh. true death. So I thought that was beautiful. 
And it, it definitely helped me figure out how God uses time and how it's not linear, but it's spherical and how um, there's different Girl. connections. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so when you yeah. when we talk about the Bible and, and, and you know, it says that um, – God is outside of time, like he created it, and that, Mm -hmm. like God, we are seated in heavenly places. I totally believe, and see, this is the track that you're on. This is what I'm talking about with your generation. This is what I'm saying. (laughs) That um, Because you can see it in that way, and you're, like, catching the revelation, that you'll be able to use time in a way that we can't. Because, you know, and... And not some of us, because I'm putting myself in. I'm gonna put myself in your generation real quick, because I'm. I want to <laughs> see the greater things. Like I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm not just satisfied going to church. Like I wanna. I wanna move mountains. I wanna raise the dead. All that. Right. And right. That. So, but I believe that because you all can think like that, that you'll be able to move in this world in a way that some of us can't. So you know, like even when we think about like aging and how our bodies are supposed to deteriorate, you're, you're seeing things again on social media and on. You know, in every commercial, it's about, oh, do you have restless leg syndrome? So you just think about even time in that sense that we think that we have to age a certain way and that our body is supposed to deteriorate. But if time is different and we are operating outside of time, then what does that mean even for our physical body? So I just love that. And, um, you know, definitely one of the movies that for me was like completely eye-opening, not only the arrival, because I also think that also touched on prophecy, which was just awesome. Mm -hmm. But Girl, The Matrix. Yes. Girl, changed yes. my life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Changed my life. <laughs> changed uh, my it life. was just so much even. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to give one example of one scene. So, or, I mean, it happened in several of the scenes in the movie, of course. But mm-hmm. when um, the, and if anyone who's listening who hasn't seen it, go see it. Pray, you know, rent it, pray, and then watch it because God will reveal some stuff to you. Yes. But um, one of the things that God showed me through that movie was <clears throat> the um, the characters of the agents who were part of the system and part of the matrix, they had mm-hmm. the ability to um, take over the body of anyone that was still plugged into the matrix. So mm-hmm. if you were still plugged into the matrix and you're, you know, and of course in that scene uh, in the movie that the actual matrix is this like thing that's plugged into like the back of your spinal cord. So mm-hmm. in the matrix, the agents had the ability to take over someone's body who was still connected. But if you weren't connected, they could not take over your body. But what it showed me is that for people who are in this world who have not been awakened to who God is and to who they are in God, that at any time the enemy can use them to try and distract you, to try and get you off course. And so sometimes you have to look at a person like, "Mm, you know what? See, the issue is you're still in the matrix. And the enemy right. Is right now to get me to act out of character, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But just recognizing that at any point, anybody who is still connected to this world and hasn't been awakened to who they really are can be used by the enemy. And sometimes that's people that can be, like, really close to us. And you're like, oh, mm-mm, nope, that's not cool. That's not you. That's the devil. Yeah. And I'm not going to do it with you. Where um, it was like a, a simulator, right? And he was trying to get him used to what the Matrix was, and there was like, it was on oh, a sidewalk. Yeah. I think, yeah, that part. Yeah. That's what was really powerful, like you were talking about, how more so not making it um, a personal thing for the people, but there is definitely a higher a higher being controlling what yes. that's going Yes. Around. That's what I Yes. Like. Yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and just listening to you talk about it, it it just comes right back to that's why God gave us the ability to discern and to choose, you know, because we are made in his image. So he's teaching us all of this, he's showing us the Internet, because we, we know more now than we did three, four generations ago. And because mm-hmm. he created knowledge. He created these movies. He created our minds. So And he, he gives us scriptures to say, let, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You know, and all of it's connected. And you talk about a matrix, whew, that's, a, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> and, again, another thing I love about your generation is that you can go to the movie and be open to hearing God in a movie that's created by Hollywood. You know what I mean? Because God mm-hmm. can use anything, anybody, at any time. And, you know, some people are like, oh, my God, I'm a Christian. I can't even go to the movies. So 
And that is okay if that's where people are, but that's what I love about you all is that because of how God created your generation that you can hear God in any way, in any shape or form, however he shows up, you won't reject it just because it doesn't look like what you think it should look like. You're open to hearing God and to getting a revelation from a number of sources, and I think that's just awesome. <laughs> yes, I agree. That's that's the biggest um, platform he talks to me on. So definitely if anybody's out there like, hmm, let me try that out, definitely, to just see <laughs> what he'll say to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Summer, did you have anything about the whole movie thing? I didn't want to count you out. Well, yeah, like, I think that's more so, like, Riley's forte. Like, I, I yeah. She, yeah, she always has, like, sometimes I don't get it, but she does a good job of, like, explaining it to me. Like, sometimes, like, I interpret it in different ways, but I enjoy, like, mm-hmm. sometimes that's we just have like those those like five minutes to just think and then just go into it and just like feed off of each other. So um, yeah, I don't I don't necessarily get them as strong, but Riley mm-hmm. definitely does a good job of like, sharing. I love yeah. that, and I love that that's um, how God is. He's so individual; like He knows who you are, so He He speaks to you in ways that He knows you can hear. Yeah. Right. Along those lines, um, oh, go ahead. Go is ahead. there? Oh no, go ahead. And I, I will hold my question. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna ultimately say that you could turn um, a movie into like a, a book club. I think you guys were doing that at one point, but our family kind of yep. does. We just watch a movie and then you know just discuss it after. So if you want to make an activity out of it, that'd be cool. Absolutely, Please. that's an excellent idea. <laughs> So, and the question I had is, I guess, on your journey in walking with the Lord, um, is there anything, I guess, new that you're seeing in yourself that, like, God is, like, opening up to you? Like, even if, I guess, Riley, if it's, like, this movie thing, like, oh, my gosh, God is speaking to me through movies. Like, if there's anything that you're seeing differently that, or a different part of yourself that God is awakening in your journey and in your walk with him? Um. I feel like God kind of works with me, like, in segments. It's kind of funny how I feel like I know when I'm in a different lesson. Like, mm-hmm. one semester, I'm like, okay, I can tell what you're trying to teach me. I, I felt that recently this semester was him teaching me to be more bold um, because mm-hmm. I've I've always been a more timid person, but, like, when I'm in my house, mm-hmm. my family knows that I'm the loudest person in here. So that's, that's – <laughs> yeah. so, like, I love to sing, I love to just yell and just be crazy. And I'm like, I wanted to start bringing that Summer out, like, because people would be like, Summer, you should be more like that. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And so that was like a prayer I had to God. I was just like, God, help me to bring, be more bold and just be more bold in you. Um, and so I think that, that's really where I can tell he's been helping just growing me and just that I've been able to, Speak what's on my mind. It's not necessarily I'm speaking anything disrespectful, but I'm just contributing to conversations or I'm just checking in on people more. I've always wanted to do these mm-hmm. things, but I'm like, oh, they're going to think I'm silly or they aren't actually going to want to talk to me. And that's something I've been right. growing in. Um, I'm not as like as full yet as I feel I can be, but I think that's where he's been um, working in me. Um, yeah, and and also in music, I'd say, I found something interesting is that God, I connect to God through music. So mm-hmm. I'm a flute player, but I've also been learning piano, guitar, and that's really how I enjoy spending my time. Um, mm-hmm. And I enjoy composing little songs or composing whether they're songs or just um, just inter- instrumental pieces. I feel that connection mm-hmm. with him. As I'm starting to learn how to unlock it. I don't necessarily know where it's going to go from here um, or who I can mm-hmm. reach with, but I feel that that's how he's also using me. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Time. Oh, my. Time. Riley? Um, the question was uh, lessons God is doing right now. Yeah, lessons or as as you are maturing and walking with the Lord, are you finding out, like, new things about yourself or either how he speaks to you or learning different parts of your personality or talents, any of those things? So just, like, anything that you're yeah. learning more about yourself as you walk with him. 
Yeah, so definitely, uh, so since it's senior year, I've been having to make um, life decisions, and it's not been easy <sighs> because I'm a person who, um, who, who values freedom. I, I'm a person who can't be in such, if I get bored or if I switch off, I, I don't know, I can't do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I was very opposed to going to college at one point. And um, because I thought it was going to take my freedom away. I thought that I was going to be in debt right away. I thought that, like, you know, it's just a path to destruction and that I didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> and also because I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just like, no, mm-hmm. no, no, I'm not going to go unless I know what I'm doing. And right. um, so it was a huge battle for for many, many months. Um, to decide if I was going or not, and it also let me see what I wanted in my life, and um, it le- God let me see that simplicity was the best way for me, um, and that I I need to minimalize everything around me, and um, that community and and love was just definitely most important, and um, like I told you in the. Like I told you earlier in the conversation of how um, he's teaching me the value of life and um, what I should do to take part in it, and I think I'm going to go mm-hmm. into sustainability, and that's what he's teaching me so far. Amen. Amen. And so for my co-host, you all want to, we're coming up on three minutes left, so both of you all can give out your closing thoughts, and then we'll close in prayer. Uh, yeah, well, I, I just really am excited about what God is taking you both, and um, just just thankful for the relationship that you had with the Lord and what you were able to share today. Um, continue to just do what you're doing and go forward, and know that the best is yet to come. And God bless you, girls. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I just like to thank you guys. Um, the, your young ladies for joining us and just sharing your wisdom, and it's so wonderful to hear directly from your mouth um, what is going on um, with our young people, and um, just I'm grateful. I heard so much wisdom today. Thank you. Very Amen. Lovely. And of course, I would just say y'all are so awesome. I've loved y'all <laughs> from the very beginning, and so it has been so fun to have you guys on the show. I look forward to just continuing to see the growth and the journey in you both, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about all that God is going to do in and through you. I'm just, I'm just, I can't even express how excited I am about it. And <laughs> Riley, I'm going to put you on the spot. Would you please? Pray us out. Pray for anything that is on your heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Well, dear God, I thank you for this conversation. Um, I thank you that we were allowed to um, be free in our discussion and um, that I I thank you for anybody who would help. Um, And I pray that you'll just lead us and guide us through our lives um, as we as we trust in you, and um, I I pray for all of those who still need you and still are looking for you, mm-hmm. searching for you, um, and definitely in our generation. Um, you said that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, so <laughs> I pray that you just guide us to where you want us to go, and I thank you, Lord. Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thanks to all the listeners so that has, tuned in. Absolutely. Amen. Thank you for listening to Bold and Beautiful When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Join Reverend Ray tomorrow at 7 p.m. And, of course, this, again, is Bold and Beautiful When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Please look us up on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, And we love you, and we're going to go out with part of our theme song. Love y'all. Bye. God bless you. (laughs) Y'all, y'all. Hey, hey, okay.
I wouldn't.